The X485 that I've been working on, all of a sudden the fuel pump would come on sporadically and I took the uh, side panel off and I was just jiggling around the wires here and there's three relays and if you can see all the crud and corrosion here, um, when I would wiggle the wires it was actually enough that it was making a connection on the terminals inside. So I'm about 90% sure this is going to take care of the problem. But it's just something that old connectors, you need to take them apart, put them back together, flush them out with a contact cleaner, and then I put some WD-40 on there, which it's going to help clean and lubricate the contacts, slide it in and off a couple times. Uh, WD-40 is not a heavy oil, it's very light and most of it's going to evaporate, but that's what I found in many cases that uh, take something apart, put it back together, and 75% of the time that'll take, your take care of your problem. Well, in this case I ended up having taken uh, pull the connector out of the relay housing and it was you know corroded pretty bad the terminal on the relay itself you know looks looked like it was green so that means it's copper um, it's been oxidizing so I cleaned this up and going to put it back together but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to have a good connection here uh, it's just a matter of you know I don't want to have to replace the wiring harness, you know, this side of the socket. So in my opinion, I'd rather spend a little time and get this thing cleaned up to where hopefully I won't have to do it again. Okay, so after cleaning that relay contact and taking the socket apart and trying to fix it, there was a piece of tape on this wiring where it had been nicked and when you look inside, the wire was actually broke in two. So what it was doing when the wire would jiggle, the two pieces would touch, and that's not something that's good. This was on the bottom of the relay, and it had rubbed against the frame and might have got pinched by the side panel. But, you know, after spending about a half hour on it and taking everything apart, uh, I finally figured out what the problem was, and... I've had more problems on this tractor with wiring being pinched and grounded and broken. Uh, so this is nothing new, but hopefully I'm going to put this back together and that'll be the end of it. Remember I said that 75% of the time I can just take connectors apart, clean them, put them back together and fix problems? Well, this was the 25% where that didn't work. The problem ended up being that the relay has the wires coming out of the socket here, and the wire had rubbed against this metal-like ear on the side of the frame. And what it actually did is the wiring was so thin, it actually broke a number of the strands, and eventually I guess it just you know broke all of the strands so what I ended up doing is there was enough left there that I pulled the connector out again and got a little piece of wire and I soldered a short stub on there and then connected it over to the fuse here which had to be replaced the existing fuse from before I had to change it but I really like to solder and then put the heat shrink tube around the connection and make sure I've got plenty of that. That's going to give it a better physical connection. I do not like crimp-on connectors. There are too many times I've worked on tractors where somebody has used crimp-on connectors and they used too big a wire size connector for the splice they were trying to make or the connection. So I always try to, as much as possible, solder them. It's going to be a le better electrical connection. And in my opinion, with the vibration on the tractor, um, the other type 
you know, if you use the splices that even have the um, heat shrink tube on it, it's just not as good. Somebody will go and pull on it and they'll just pull the connectors apart. So this started out being a simple project, which ended up being a couple hours by the time I got everything done. But that's what happens with electrical problems.